on July 3rd of 1999, Jim Tomey hit one of the longest home runs of all time. The home run came in a win over the Kansas City Royals at home in Cleveland, Ohio at Jacobs Field. Right off the bat, it was a no-doubter, but where it landed surprised everybody. The ball would end up landing over the left center field fence to the right of a section of bleachers. After the ball bounced in the concourse, it went out of the entire stadium and onto the street. The home run was measured at 511 feet. Jim Tomey was one of the best power hitters of all time and has 612 career home runs. This was the longest one of his career and they ended up building a statue in the stadium near where the ball landed. Also at Jacobs Field, just two years earlier on April 30th, Mark McGuire hit the longest home run ever at the ballpark. The Cleveland Indians were playing the Oakland A's and Mark McGuire hit a long home run off Oral Hershiser. The ball hit off a sign behind the seats in left field. Nobody had ever seen a ball hit quite that far and it was measured at 523 feet. There's no statue for this home run though. McGuire was one of the strongest players of the 90s and hit many long home runs. He hit 58 home runs that season and would be traded to the Cardinals later in the year. The next year, he hit 70 home runs, which was a record at the time. He did take steroids though, which certainly helped. The next farthest home run was hit by Daryl Strawberry in 1988. It took place on April 4th, 1988 when the Mets were in Montreal playing against the Expos. The game was at Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Strawberry hit the ball so high into right field that it hit the roof near where they have lights down the right field line. It's hard to see in the video, but after hitting off the roof by the lights, the ball bounced back onto the field of play. It caused some minor confusion on if it was even a home run, but it was quickly ruled to be a homer, and the home run would be estimated at 525 feet. Strawberry would go on to hit 39 home runs that season and 335 in his career. In May of 1997, just about a month after Mark McGuire's long home run in Cleveland, the Rockies were playing the Marlins in Miami. Andres Galarraga came up with the bases loaded for the Rockies. He hit a grand slam which went into the upper deck in left field. Nobody seemed to be in the stands in the outfield, but nevertheless, the ball landed in a spot that nobody had ever seen before. It was estimated at 529 feet and was the longest home run hit in baseball that season. Dave Kingman was a powerful hitter in the 1970s and 80s. He hit 442 career home runs in 16 seasons, but his longest one was in 1979 when he was playing for the Chicago Cubs. They were playing against the Phillies at Wrigley Field and the 6'6 Kingman hit one out of the entire stadium. The ball went over the fence and bleachers and onto the street. You can see the ball bouncing down the road after it lands. It was measured at 530 feet and one of the longest home runs of all time. In 1971, the MLB All-Star Game was at Tiger Stadium in Detroit. During the game, Reggie Jackson hit a home run so far that it almost left the stadium. It hit off of a transformer on the roof in right field above the stands. If it didn't hit the transformer, it probably would have left the stadium entirely. The home run was the longest in the history of the All-Star Game and measured at 532 feet. It was also the farthest in Jackson's career, who had a total of 563 career home runs. The home run helped the AL win the All-Star Game, and it's one of the best moments in All-Star Game history. Adam Dunn was one of the great power hitters of the 2000s. He hit 462 career home runs, many of them very long ones. The farthest was in August of 2004 against the Dodgers. The home run went to straightaway center field and the ball ended up going above the batter's eye. It left the entire stadium in the deepest part, which is extremely hard to do. The home run was measured at 535 feet. It is said that after the ball left the stadium, it bounced all the way to the banks of the Ohio River. It's also the longest home run at Great American Ballpark history. There's no video of this home run available, but in 1978, Willie Stargell hit a 535-foot home run. It took place in Montreal at Olympic Stadium. In the fourth inning against the Expos, Stargell of the Pirates hit a long home run to right field. The ball landed in the upper deck and was the first time that a ball had landed that high up. 
It was estimated at 535 feet. The home run would end up being the longest one ever hit in Olympic Stadium. Mark McGuire is back on the list with another home run. This time, it was one that he hit in 1996 when he was with the Oakland Athletics. They were facing the Seattle Mariners at the King Dome in Seattle. Randy Johnson was pitching for the Mariners and was known as one of the fastest pitchers in the league. McGuire took him deep to a part of the King Dome where a home run had never been hit before. It was estimated at 538 feet. The home run was the longest in King Dome history and is also one of the longest in Major League Baseball history as well. In 1989, the Oakland Athletics were playing against the Toronto Blue Jays in the ALCS. The game was at the Sky Dome in Toronto. During the game, Jose Canseco of the A's hit a home run so far it went into the fifth deck. The home run was estimated at 540 feet, which some people feel is the longest home run of all time. Canseco was known as one of the strongest players in baseball during his entire career. He also took steroids during his career, so some people also don't count this as a home run at all. Either way, the ball traveled a long ways. The Oakland Athletics went on to win the ALCS and the World Series that year. In April of 1953, Mickey Mantle of the New York Yankees hit a long home run. The Yankees were playing the Washington Senators at Griffith Stadium in D.C. In the top of the fifth, the Yankees were leading 2-1. Mickey Mantle was batting right-handed against left-handed pitcher Chuck Stobbs. He hit the ball over the left field fence and over all 32 rows of seats. The ball went out of the entire stadium and bounced off of a sign that was 460 feet from home plate. The ball went into the street behind the stadium and bounced into somebody's yard. The total distance of the home run was 565 feet. This is about where the ball landed, and Howard University Hospital is on the site where Griffith Stadium used to be. Back when Bryce Harper was in high school, it was said that he hit a home run 570 feet. It happened when he was 15 years old as a freshman at Las Vegas High School. After the game, his coaches measured where the ball landed, and it was 570 feet from home plate. Bryce Harper was so good in high school that he graduated early, getting his GED right around the time he turned 17 years old. Then he played one season in JUCO before declaring for the MLB draft, where he was picked first overall. He ended up making it to the big leagues at age 19 and never looked back. On July 18th of 1921, the New York Yankees were playing the Detroit Tigers at Navin Field. In the game, Babe Ruth hit his 139th career home run in the 8th inning. With the home run, he broke the record at the time for most career home runs in MLB history. It also went a pretty long ways. The home run was hit off of Tigers pitcher Burt Cole. To that point in the game, Babe Ruth had basically been intentionally walked every at bat. Tigers player manager Ty Cobb told his pitchers not to give Ruth anything to hit. Babe had walked four times and hadn't even taken the bat off of his shoulder until his eighth inning home run. The very first swing he took of the day, he hit a home run to center field. The winds were also said to be about 20 miles per hour and blowing out to center field. There was also a wall measured 560 feet from home plate that the ball went over. The home run was measured at 575 feet and may have been one of the longest home runs ever. Josh Gibson is one of the greatest power hitters in baseball history and played 14 seasons in the Negro Leagues. In 1937, with the Homestead Grays, Gibson was playing at Yankee Stadium. He hit a home run to center field, and it is said that the ball hit the back wall behind the center field seats. Two feet higher, and it would have gotten over the wall. The estimated distance of the home run was 580 feet, which was reported by the Sporting News. The longest home run ever hit in professional baseball was by Joey Meyer. It happened on June 3rd of 1987. He was in AAA for the Milwaukee Brewers, playing on the Denver Zephyrs. The game was at Mile High Stadium in Denver against the Buffalo Bisons. In the seventh inning, Meyer hit a home run to left field, then went over the wall and hit a seat in the empty second deck. The home run was measured at 582 feet, which is the farthest home run ever officially recorded. They changed the seat color on the seat where the ball hit, so everybody could tell where his home run landed. Mile High Stadium was demolished in 2002, but the seat was saved. Joey Meyer was a great power hitter in the minor leagues, but only played two seasons in the majors for the Brewers. He still has the record of longest home run in professional baseball, though. 
there are a few other home runs that are said to have gone farther, but have not officially been verified. Babe Ruth and Josh Gibson are both said to have hit home runs over 600 feet. Mickey Mantle is also said to have hit home runs not just over 600 feet, but one over 700 feet. But the way of measuring those home runs were not confirmed as accurate. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.